The Master's Mysteries Tales of Magical Mastery Episode 41 In Uncle Zhang's memories, when he was in his teens, there was a severe drought in the town of Funyu. It didn't rain for more than two years, and the crops failed to grow, causing countless people to suffer from hunger. The Zhang family was the richest family in the town, so they never had to worry about food and drink. However, Uncle Zhang's father was a kind-hearted person, and seeing so many hungry people, he opened a porridge shed to help the disaster-stricken people. The situation was unfavorable, and the Funyu Mountain area shouldn't have been like this. If the drought continued like this, even with the Zhang family's strength, it wouldn't be sustainable. This deeply worried Uncle Zhang. Tonight, father wants to observe the celestial phenomenon at night. Come, let's go back. However, Uncle Zhang had always been studying Taoist practices, and he could sense that such a severe drought must have a reason behind it. So, he decided to investigate it thoroughly. That night, the young Uncle Zhang, who was only in his teens, secretly opened the door and looked out into the courtyard. He knew that his father was going to perform Taoist rituals and observe the celestial phenomena to find out the cause of the local drought. Let me explain here that the Zhang family is the descendant of the disappeared godly race from a thousand years ago. Uncle Zhang's father is the current patriarch, but due to the decline in their numbers, their lineage is the only one left of the godly race. Moreover, the knowledge of Daoist practices has also been scarce in their lineage. Though they couldn't possess the profound magical abilities like their ancestors, they could still perform rituals and open the heavenly eye to observe certain things. After Uncle Zhang opened his heavenly eye and looked up at the stars, he was astonished. It turned out that the disaster star was prominent, showing signs of a menacing black aura rising to the sky. This indicated that a severe drought demon known as Huanba was causing the continuous drought. Heavenly blessing, if father doesn't come back. As a descendant of the godly race, Uncle Zhang had always abided by their ancestral teachings, protecting the land and its people. Faced with this crisis, he couldn't just stand by. However, this journey was extremely dangerous, and the only thing he worried about was his own son, Zhang Tianfu. Remember to go to the Iron Bull Sex Tianji to seek guidance. At that time, young Zhang didn't understand what his father meant. Why wouldn't his father come back? What was he supposed to do? And why did he have to find that eccentric old Taoist with a bull's nose? Without further explanation, his father raised the family's heirloom sword and soared over the high wall, quickly disappearing into the darkness of the night. Young Zhang, at such a tender age, discovered for the first time that his father was an extraordinary person capable of soaring through the skies like the immortals in stories. Leaving young Zhang astonished, let's focus on the elder Zhang. Following the observations of celestial phenomena, he arrived at the half cliff of the South Mountain. Looking down, he indeed saw a surge of ominous energy rising from beneath a large stone. Elder Zhang knew that this seemingly ordinary boulder likely concealed something important beneath it. Although the boulder was massive, he wielded an ancient divine sword in his hand. With a swift gesture, he unleashed countless icy rays of light from the sword and struck the boulder with force. The divine sword was truly remarkable, as the sturdy boulder was instantly split in two and rolled away to both sides. Upon closer inspection of the sword, its edge remained undamaged, gleaming with cold light. This demonstrated that the divine weapon required a strong master, proving that Elder Zhang was no ordinary person. With the boulder split open, the ominous energy surge, revealing the pitch-black square-shaped deep hole below, with stone steps leading further down. Holding his breath, step by step, Elder Zhang descended the stairs slowly. Before long, he reached the end of the steps and discovered an enormous stone-built ancient tomb. When he observed the inside of the tomb, he was even more astonished. It turned out that the lid of the coffin in the tomb had been pushed open and lay beside it. A massive black figure was faintly visible amidst the dense, ominous energy. 
As the ominous energy gradually weakened, Elder Zhang focused his gaze and found a corpse sitting inside the large coffin, with a huge python behind it. The corpse and the python were connected by several flesh-eating insects, tightly attached to each other. Looking at the corpse, it was a plump individual with red glints flickering in its eyes. The flesh-eating insects were reviving it, continuously absorbing the essence from the python. Upon seeing this corpse, Elder Zhang immediately recalled the legend of an extremely cruel official who appeared in this area 300 years ago. He was known for consuming human flesh and blood, practicing dark arts. Later, he disappeared during the people's uprising. Could this be the corpse demon? While Elder Zhang was pondering, the corpse demon sensed the presence of a living person. Its eyes emitted a strong red light, and its mouth, filled with sharp fangs, let out a strange howl towards him. In response, all the revived flesh-eating insects on the corpse turned their heads towards the direction where Elder Zhang was standing, like a group of green snakes. Before Elder Zhang could react, several flesh-eating insects had already shot towards him. He realized that if he got bitten by these insects, his vital essence would be drained, leading to his demise. However, Elder Zhang was not an ordinary person. He steadied his mind and swiftly moved his body, using his sword to cut the approaching flesh-eating insects into two pieces. Despite his efforts, the number of flesh-eating insects seemed endless. Just as he cut down some of them, more would emerge from the corpse demon. Facing the almost formed giant web of flesh-eating insects, Elder Zhang focused all his energy, unleashing his ancestral sword techniques to the extreme. His divine sword flew up and down, striking with all his might. He managed to cut down another wave of flesh-eating insects, gradually gaining an advantage. However, Elder Zhang knew that the root of the problem was the corpse demon. He continued cutting down the insects while rushing towards the corpse demon inside the massive coffin. After slicing through the insects that blocked his path, he could deliver the final blow, a direct strike to the heart of the corpse demon to rid the area of this evil. Just at that moment, while airborne, Elder Zhang suddenly noticed a flash of red light in the eyes of the python behind the corpse demon. In the next instant, the massive python opened its blood-filled mouth wide and lunged at him, emitting a strong putrid odor. However, Elder Zhang reacted swiftly. He exerted force from his waist, turning his body mid-air, avoiding the python's attack. As Elder Zhang prepared to deliver a sword strike to sever the python's head, he suddenly noticed a flesh-eating insect emerging from the back of the corpse demon's head, directly piercing into the python's seven-inch area. He realized that the python had lost its consciousness and was being controlled by the corpse demon. This meant that the python might not have had any intention of harming people and was merely manipulated by someone. Elder Zhang adjusted his sword's trajectory, not aiming for the snake's head, but instead targeting the flesh-eating insect at the back of the corpse demon's head. The strike was incredibly precise, severing the flesh-eating insect without harming the python. The connection between the corpse demon and the python was severed. Perhaps due to losing the python's sustenance, the corpse demon's body softened, collapsing onto the giant coffin. The python, however, raised its head high, appearing to be in distress. Elder Zhang didn't have time to think too much about it. Assuming the corpse demon was already dead, he wanted to find something to ignite and burn the corpse demon, eliminating the source of the ominous energy. However, before he could think further, a sharp pain surged from his back. Elder Zhang then saw a blood-red flesh-eating insect directly piercing into his back. How could this be? The flesh-eating insects on the corpse demon had already been severed, and it was supposed to be dead. He transferred the sword to his left hand and tried to pick off the flesh-eating insect with his other hand. However, the flesh-eating insect sensed the danger and quickly dodged away. It dawned on Elder Zhang that the corpse demon might have already attained a certain level of Daoist cultivation. The flesh-eating insect, now with a simple form of consciousness, resurrected the middle insect. 
However, it was too late for him to realize this as he blacked out and collapsed to the ground. Being well aware of the potent corpse poison carried by the middle insect, Elder Zhang tried to force himself to sit up. He noticed that the corpse demon had climbed out of the giant coffin and was approaching him step by step. Suddenly, the corpse demon let out a roar, and the middle insect shot towards Elder Zhang like a venomous snake. At this point, he was too weak to resist and resigned himself to death. Feeling regretful for not having mastered his skills well enough to rid the people of this evil. Just as he closed his eyes in despair, preparing for death, to his astonishment, nothing happened. Struggling to stay conscious, Elder Zhang opened his eyes and saw a massive body blocking the flesh-eating insect before him. He couldn't believe it. The one protecting him was the enormous python. Elder Zhang wanted to understand what was happening but the poison in his body was overpowering him, leaving him unable to ponder. In his final moments, he faintly saw the python and the corpse demon engage in a battle. Eventually, it seemed like the python emerged victorious, swallowing the corpse demon whole, and then turned to face him. Finally, everything went black before him, and he knew nothing more.